My name is Tarmac and thanks for checking out my review of Thimbleweed Park by developer Terrible Toybox on PC. Now, I've got some history with this that I need to make abundantly clear. Sierra and LucasArts represent some of my fondest childhood gaming memories, so when I heard that Ron Gilbert, the creator of Maniac Mansion, Monkey Island, the Indiana Jones Point and Clicks, and more, was making a new title, I had to take a look at this game. It's a Kickstarter funded game, but I did not back the Kickstarter because I don't do that. I'm very aware of my nostalgia glasses, but would also claim that Gilbert has an uphill battle because my standards were going to be very high as well. Thimbleweed Park is a point and click adventure done in a retro style that is being released through the Microsoft Store, Steam, or GOG for a DRM free version on PC, Mac, Linux, Xbox One on March 30th, 2017, with iOS, Android, and other platforms coming at some point in the future. For those who are familiar with point-and-click adventures, there isn't much new in the way that the game plays. For those not familiar, I'll explain it briefly. In Thimbleweed Park, you have four different characters and a part-time fifth that you can swap between. Each character has an inventory panel and verb action buttons. If you want to open a locked door, you might need to click Use, then click the key in your inventory and finally click on the door. Simple basic stuff. What Thimbleweed Park does is ensure that this is as streamlined as much as possible. The most likely verb for a particular object is highlighted by default, though it might not turn out to be the action required to actually solve a puzzle. You click to move, just like in the old games, but can double-click to increase the movement speed, and click and hold the mouse to just continually walk in a particular direction. Items can be swapped between characters in a similar way to what was done in Day of the Tentacle, but with the exception of a few character-specific story-related items. Effectively, what we're talking about here is a bunch of quality-of-life features that make playing the game less about fighting the mechanics and more about the storytelling and puzzle-solving. I would also like to specifically call out the concept of moon logic. Point and clicks are known for their stretches of logic where you get stuck because there is no logical solution to the puzzle that you're working on and you have to rub one item against another until you find the right combination of items that were in the designer's head at the time the puzzle was made. While Thimbleweed Park does have a couple of instances of this kind of bizarre off-kilter logic, it's used very sparingly and the vast majority of solutions require a combination of logical thought and awareness of the world remembering things that you read or heard earlier in order to solve something. I felt that the puzzle design was very well done. There are even red herring items that have no use, or just token flavor text value, which is great misdirection. That said, in my playthrough, having spent about 18 hours with the game, I spent about 3 hours of that time completely stuck wandering around trying to figure out what I needed to do. But that three hours was spread between essentially three distinct different puzzles that I couldn't solve. And I need to make a suggestion to all gamers who want to give this title a try. Much like the days of old where you couldn't find the solution to a puzzle in 30 seconds or less by just asking Google, I would recommend that you treat this game as though the internet doesn't exist. I was privileged to be able to play it early, which forced my hand on that issue because no walkthroughs were available anyways. But as the credits rolled, I felt like my accomplishment was far more than it would have been otherwise, and frankly, that's a feeling I have not had in a long time. The tagline on the Steam store page is, the deeper you go, the weirder it gets, and that probably couldn't be more true. There's some real meta-nostalgic storytelling going on here, with frequent fourth wall breaks and a significant amount of humor along the way. The story has you start off as two characters who are trying to convince each other that they're federal agents investigating a murder. Through a series of events, you meet up with and take control of Ransom the Insult Clown, a circus comedy act cursed by an old lady, and Dolores, a woman set on becoming a game developer for the famed game company Mucus Phlegm, despite the wishes of her uncle Chuck. You just had to get LeChuck into this game somehow, didn't you, Ron? Jeez. Even Thimbleweed is a threepwood mispronunciation. See what I mean about the nostalgia and references? I love it. It's also nifty how they handled their Kickstarter. Backers had a couple of different tiers, including those with the ability to write book titles and record answering machine messages. You can read the book titles in the library, which is a great way of engaging folks in the design process. The phone book has tons of names in it. If you dial any of the four-digit backer numbers, you get the audio that that person recorded for the game. Now, I do feel that folks who have never played the old Monkey Island games are likely to miss out on a lot of really good jokes and references. That doesn't mean they won't be able to enjoy the title, but it might be worthwhile to pick up the special editions of Monkey Island 1 and 2, as well as Day of the Tentacle, to really make sure you catch more of the sideline comedy.
We are not winning any awards for graphical fidelity with Thimbleweed. Rather, the game was designed to look like a much more updated version of Maniac Mansion, able to scale properly to HD resolutions and still have everything on the screen be obviously identifiable. And I think to that end, they have succeeded in creating a look and feel that is similar to older games, but with a much higher pixel count. Animations are fairly simplistic, but with much more modern variety, like Ransom's circus trailer tilting and creaking as you walk from one side to the other. I do have to call out the terrible map though. Monkey Island had a great overland map with torchlight and mystique. Thimbleweed Park has a map that shows no character, no atmosphere, and is merely a practical way of getting around rather than something that visually adds to the experience. I was consistently disappointed every time I wanted to fast travel because it actually looks like an even lower fidelity version of the retro style graphics. In fact, this would have been a good opportunity to clash with the game graphical style in the opposite way by having a really nice detailed map for a retro graphic style game. I also have a problem with the voiceovers in Thimbleweed Park. Well, I should clarify that, just some of the voiceovers. There appear to be reused voice actors for certain characters in the game, and some voices just don't feel like they fit the character to me. And yes, I'm perfectly aware that a set of characters are intended to be this way, rather I'm talking about others that do not appear intended to be repetitious. Ransom and Dolores are great, Uncle Chuck and his brother are great, Madame Marina? Not great. At least, not for the character. Welcome to the Thimbleweed Park Occult Bookstore, Dolores. Outside of voices though, the ambient audio and soundtrack has a good amount of variation. Everything from calm night tunes to circus regalia and elevator music. While individual songs aren't what I would consider extremely memorable, akin to something like Monkey Island or Day of the Tentacle themes, they are still really good songs and fit the mood of the game very well. Thimbleweed Park is a very simple game from a performance perspective. I experienced no issues, but I wouldn't expect to as the system requirements are Windows 7 with 4 gigs of RAM, a 1 gigabyte install size, and an Intel HD 3000, which is a laptop CPU from 2011. As a result, there's very little for options to speak of as well. There are some options to even further retroize the game for fonts and the way that the verbs look turning on or off text or voice, changing the text languages and scroll speed. It's got volume adjustment sliders, controller support, which I didn't like very much, but I don't think that's a fault of the developer. I just don't like playing games like this with a controller. And last, for graphical options, you can select full screen or not, and that's about it. All right, there was one more graphical option, toilet paper over or under, but you'll have to play the game to see that one in action. The best summary I can manage is that Thimbleweed Park is about as on the nose as video games get. It has a retro style akin more to Maniac Mansion than Monkey Island, great music in parts with middling music in others, and while the voice acting for some characters seems out of place or reused, not counting the character this is obviously intentional for, overall it's an excellent throwback to the point and click games from the LucasArts era that any current or nostalgic fan will really enjoy, though folks who have never played those older games might miss some of the references and jokes. But even up to the very end, Ron Gilbert keeps his sense of humor all the way down to the price. To quote Guybrush Threepwood from Monkey Island, never pay more than 20 bucks for a computer game. Thimbleweed Park's base price is $19.99 USD on launch. I am beyond willing to recommend this game to any and all fans of the point and click genre, especially at that price. It's out March 30th and you'll be able to find it on Steam, the Microsoft Store and GOG for PC, Mac, Linux and Xbox One with iOS and Android to follow at some point afterwards. They didn't rule out PS4, but no information has yet been confirmed on that front. Thanks very much for checking out my review of Thimbleweed Park on PC. My channel's full of content that I think you'll enjoy, from Feature Creep, my analytical editorials on the game industry, the news wrap-up, a late-night talk show monologue on game news and releases, other reviews, and in addition, I also stream on twitch.tv slash Tarmac Gaming every Wednesday night. Tarmac's my name. Please wear it out. Cheers. Bye-bye.